other many things that are wrong. There's been such an avalanche of things that we have to try and defend against that for really practical reasons, in trying to struggle against each of those kind of fronts of attack, we end up in divided separate groups just trying to prevent things going far, far worse. So I think the, the enormous challenge that we have to try and meet is how to build a unified movement, and that's given this three thousand billion dollars of, of propaganda and the ownership of media. Um, and I think where Occupy was an inspiring start, I mean it wasn't the answer, but where it was an inspiring start was that it was simultaneous in eleven hundred cities across the world. It was it was based at the financial system which was driving this stuff. Um, and as Linda pointed out, you know, the, the forty trillion dollars in the fossil fuel industry is, is very big and we tend to think of the fossil fuel companies specifically, but the banks that sit atop them are even more powerful. Um, there's a, a great quote that many people have heard, but I think it's worth repeating as often as possible from, from Henry Ford, which is something like, so it's good that the ordinary person doesn't understand the banking system, but surely if he did, that's his time to read, isn't it? Um, so surely if he did, there would be revolution by tomorrow morning. We essentially have a situation where the banks get to invent money for what they want, which is fossil fuels, which is you know blowing up mortgage bubbles, etc. So what we essentially need to do is democratize the economy. Um, the, the term political economy was, was kind of current a hundred years ago, and I think one of the greatest defeats of the propaganda system, and this was accelerated in the neoliberal period, is um, selling the idea that you can just separate economics and politics. Economics is this kind of science that, that is about kind of calculations and markets and all the rest of it, and politics is, is sort of somewhere else. And you know, for really obvious reasons, if we don't have control over economic decisions, we don't have control over political <coughs> So this is really a, about a movement that needs to that needs to come together, that needs to have have the space to, to spread the word about a better world. And in practical terms, in terms of what this conference is about, how we kind of diversify the movement, how we build it as something like a critical mass, to be able to understand how climate change is but uh, but the most sort of urgent symptom of this crazy undemocratic politics we have. The benefit of understanding it. In, in terms of that wider context is that we can speak to people who are worried about the cuts, who are worried about more specific things that are affecting their lives. And, and as, again, as Ruth's you know, real life experience has shown, um, that can really, people's understanding can really shift overnight. And, and perhaps the last thing to say is that critical masses for change, like the, the academic literature suggests that between sort of one and seven percent of people can use this. You know, so how is it that one percent of people can trigger rights of women, decent working conditions, end of slavery, etc. And the answer is precisely as Ruth is saying, because people are already living this totally sort of cognitively dissonant existence. They, they want a better world that we should have already. They believe that of course we shouldn't have tiny percentage of people taking all the world's resources and then using that power to destroy the politics of everyone else. Everybody believes in this stuff already deep down. Our job as activists is to, to inspire people to come into spaces where they can actually just connect with that basic compassionate knowledge that, that we have beneath our kind of fearful denial mechanisms. Um, I was meant to be here sort of with, specifically with the retaining of power and odds quite happen, I haven't done that. In terms of the retaining of power, it's basically it's the evolution of climate camp. It was, I was at the Baldwin Reception Camp where um, um, at the time of that, my children were pregnant, but they were there. It's due to about two days, so it's kind of amazing to be here today. Um, but, um, but yeah, that, that weekend, the weekend of when it came to the Baltimore camp, that really it brought thousands of people along and really kind of forced what was already quite a high profile issue for the camp into being a much more high profile issue. And the challenge this summer, because it's not fracking isn't new like it was last summer, is to make sure that the extreme energy side that we pick this year um, involves a, a kind of coming together of people that has just as much influence. Um, in terms of having my Occupy hat on, there are really interesting discussions we've got at the moment about what we do in October for the roughly third anniversary of Occupy, which is October 15th. There's a big PUC gathering on the 18th, which is a Saturday, and what we've decided specifically so far is we're going to have some kind of occupation of Parliament Square from Friday the 17th to probably Tuesday the 22nd. Um, and the idea there is, is for this not to be to occupy as was, but occupy specifically getting numerous different groups to descend on Parliament with their own message about the individual, the, the, the specific issues that they're focusing on, but trying to get all those groups to, to sign up to 
a, a basic statement that says we recognise that these sites are not separate. Um, my personal sort of baby, if you like, in terms of how we try and how we try and move forward. And this is just to feed the idea, and if it's interesting to people, please come to the workshop later about how we build the crystal map. But to do something like a process pyramid, where we get people to, to take um, action on days of action going forward from the camp for say three months, and the goal is to get everyone who takes part in that movement um, to take some action each week. Um, that, that, that the bar for involve, involvement is as well as possible, so that you can hand out these bits. But your job is to take a picture and send it to the website and get one other person to take some action with you the following week. So it's a real kind of grassroots one by one shift. Thank you very much. Thank you.